Right, um, right. And, and when you get into religious debates, it's almost more about sound bites, right? These things are way too subtle, and there, there are areas of physics that are not rock solid yet. Um, you know, once yeah, you get right. outside the standard model and these sorts of things, then there's a lot of theories out there being thrown around, and um, you have to be very careful with your wording and say that, you know, uh, whether, we don't, whether we know something or not, this is a possibility these sorts of things that we could we could potentially explain why this is happening, uh, these sorts of things. But you're right. You know, we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, grant uh, too many um, too many uh, assertions uh, unnecessarily. Right. Not and, debating. And, and just 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 to finish, this will be my last point. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, I think it is a problem that we that if someone grants that there could be something or nothing, because one of the problems it seems to me with cosmological arguments is that the theist posing them is just assuming too much that nothing could exist. Or you know that that whatever God is a better alternative. I mean, if, if they are going to propose some unfathomable, immaterial, timeless God as a cause, um, it seems that that's no more reasonable than just proposing a pre-existence or pre-universe with other laws that are unfathomable to us. You know, in which sure. case our universe could have come to be uncaused. Again, that might not make sense to us, but that's no more impossible to imagine than this God that they're proposing. Yeah. So, you know, why go for the supernatural explanation God when we could settle for an unfathomable naturalistic one? Right. It's an attempt to, to define God into existence is really what it is, right? There's something else that's, been, that's gone on. Um, there were apologists who were running around jumping all over this. Atheists believe that everything came from nothing uh, issue. And early on, when this was becoming popular, uh, there were many of us who, who said, nobody's proposing that everything came from nothing. And then, of course, uh, real physicists uh, began offering... Uh, the, Plausible explanations, you know, right? The, well, I mean, if you, read, if you read Vic Stinger and others, um, using the physics understanding of nothing, um, they actually began to posit that everything could have come from nothing. And then you get this equivocation fallacy between what they mean by nothing and what the apologists mean by nothing. Right. And it, it, crea it creates this, mess, this right? mess where you, you yeah. really can't even talk about it because, you know, I don't remotely uh, pretend to grasp the things that, you know, Krauss and Stinger and others and Hawking have talked about. Um, but I, which is why I think I, I like your... Uh, your take on it even more, which is, you know, where do you get off assuming that nothing is even possible? Um, it seems to me entirely plausible that something may have always existed in some form or another. And then, you know, you can, you can continue down that trail to talk about uh, when we talk about the universe from the conjectured Big Bang forward, um, what we're really talking about is the current presentation of the local universe that we experience. We have have no way of positing what came what came before, or even if before is a valid concept to go with that. So, yep. Right, right. Yeah. Ultimately, I think you know we have to agree with Wittgenstein in that you know where where we don't know, we just have to remain silent. Yeah, that would be better. Um, but we should keep looking as well. Right. So. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. We've got Julie in Brooklyn. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Not a lot. Hey, um, I just want to, first thing, I just want to say, Matt, I love it when you go, no, 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 you're done. I think that's hilarious. Is that how you'd like this call to end? <laughs> no, that's not why I called in. But, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'll do it for you if you really want. <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time hearing. All right, anyway, um, I just want to talk about the yes, bullshit that's been going on this week. Like everybody, everybody We're having trouble on. hearing you again, so you're going to try to have to make this brief. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just want to ask, you know, you know, people going ballistic over the whole Zodiac thing. It's not like something they're indoctrinated with from an early age. So how do people get drawn to these things? How do they believe in them? Otherwise, intelligent people, and even people who are atheists, and why is it like, why do they go ape shit over, you know, when they find out that the Earth is tilted, you know, a few degrees the other way, you know? Right. <laughs> so just to give context to our audience who may not have heard this, uh, I guess there was a, a, an astronomer who in the last couple of days, I think, made the announcement that, uh, oh, these, uh, these constellations that you think you know about uh, had all moved from whatever time, I, I don't know what time they're talking about, but uh, they've been moving around because the, uh, the I guess the... Uh, the, the Earth wobbles like a top, and, and the constellations move around. And so he's, he basically threw a big monkey wrench into this, uh, this horoscope idea that, that 
the location of your birth gives you this this personality or the, the, the time of your birth. Actually, he didn't. He didn't. And this isn't okay. news. Um, okay. <laughs> there's most. I, I, most astrologers use the tropical zodiac instead of the, uh, the sidereal zodiac, um, and it's the sidereal one that's been affected by this, so it's, it doesn't affect it. Not to mention the fact that, of course, this is all nonsense in the first well, place. I was going to ask if you were defending uh, astrology. No, no. I'm just saying that <laughs> this is another, this is a prime example of the news reporting something that isn't news, and a bunch of people who have no idea what they're talking about spinning it up into even more than it is. And it's particularly ironic because even if it did impact something if it, if it did impact astrology astrology is such a load of horse manure um, <laughs> that it's not even really worth kind of wasting time on um, as to your question about how people how and why people buy into this it's the same reason that they're going to buy into anything else uh, something happens oh that couldn't be a, a coincidence and they we are pattern seekers and most astrologers you know when you when you go look up your your weekly horoscope, your daily horoscope, or whatever. It's this vague thing like a fortune cookie that could apply to anybody anywhere, and this has been demonstrated scientifically. You can hand out the exact same uh, horoscope to 12 different people, each with a different zodiac sign, and they all think that, that it, you know, they'll pick that it identifies yeah, with James them. James Randi used to have yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, as, right? as, as long as they're initially convinced that this was specifically prepared for them. And so you have people who are going to check their horoscopes who are already so, convinced. So it's an ego stroke in a yeah. certain way. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, ooh, look, isn't this neat. Now, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there are some really, really crazy people um, uh, amongst the astrology community. Uh, but I think most people kind of look at it as a curiosity and maybe a bit of fun along the lines of a fortune cookie. I don't know if anybody's adding, you know, in bed to their horoscopes. Um, <laughs> But maybe we Might should make start it. More it. Fun, yeah. you know, <laughs> today you'll have a difficult day, and please, be, you know, keep in mind, stay away from Scorpios in bed. So. You'll achieve great things in bed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it's it's just like it's like all over Facebook, people are just going ballistic, like, oh my god, I'm a Virgo, not a Libra, or whatever yeah. else, and, it, and I'm like, you guys actually believe in that stuff, and they're like, yeah, and blah, 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 and it's like, come on, you guys are intelligent, you're, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I don't get it. Yeah, the, the, well, there's, this whole, the there's this whole area uh, that we really sort of don't touch on as much on this show as we probably should, is of skepticism, right? There's a lot of people out there making claims, uh, claims of, uh, you know, cures for this and that, and, and these vitamins will make you stronger or whatever. You'll lose weight this way. There's a whole lot of quackery out there, and, you know, we tend to focus on atheism and God claims on this show, but a lot of the folks here in this audience and in the ACA are, are skeptics as well, and we're very concerned about these sorts of things. And this sort of falls in that category. It's not really a God claim, but it's something that uh, warrants looking into as far as what evidence is there behind it. And when you look, when you dig deeper, there is an evidence for it, and there's evidence against it. And this is, this is what you should be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, and, and thanks a lot for the call, Julie. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. No, 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 <laughs> you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, ba -dum -bum. The, uh, <laughs> it's worth mentioning, though, that, you know, I mean, we get a lot of email. We focus, as John pointed out, we focus on atheism. We talk about atheism. We talk about religion a lot. Um, but first and foremost, I'm a skeptic. And that's true for all of the hosts and co-hosts of the show, as well as most of the people in the ACA that we associate with. I mean, you're not going to have an atheist group where you don't run across some people who aren't skeptics. But I'm a skeptic first and foremost, which means that, um, you know, if if the God claims were borne out by evidence, then I would change my mind. This isn't some, uh, oh, no, 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 that's Dogmatic yeah, position, impossible. Right? The reason that I focus on, on atheism primarily is because, first of all, despite people's claims to the contrary, I think that a proper application of skepticism when viewing religious claims does necessarily lead to atheism. Um, and maybe we'll get some calls about that at some point. Yeah, it's more um, of a conclusion than an assumption. Yeah, right? it's not. No, there is no assumption to it. It is a result, a direct result of examining skepticism. these claims. Right. But the, the biggest reason that I focus on on religion is, first of all, it's it's an area that where I'm not only you know I have slightly more expertise than I do in say you know homeopathy or uh, the anti-vax nonsense, but also it's the biggest thing 
going. There is no bigger issue than people's core beliefs that they run around with no evidence to support them. We're talking about things that are so divisive on a broad scale that they influence everything about the society we live in, right down to whether or not we're going to be in a war at any given time, uh, whether or not God told somebody we need to go to war. Um, and also because every belief you hold affects potentially every other belief that you hold. It affects how you're going to assess and judge claims. And so, like I've said before, I want to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. But the people who think that, oh, well, the, there are plenty of skeptics who are also religious. Well, no, there are plenty of skeptical people who are also religious. I don't, I'm not convinced that they have applied the skeptical principles to their religion. I know that when I did, I, I had to, was forced to abandon it. Um, but there are a lot of reasonable, very intelligent, rational religious people out there right now, and they're not doing anything that is hugely harmful, that, uh, of any great significance. And, it, and I think that in most cases it's because religion isn't as important to their life as they might think, um, that they don't make decisions about their day-to-day -day life based on gods and angels and demons and devils and things. Um, but they still hold beliefs for which they have not, they, they, they have not demonstrated sufficient reason to hold those beliefs. And that's dangerous. And if people don't think, don't understand why that's dangerous, it's the reason that I do what I do. It's the reason why I don't come on here and do a skeptic show where we talk about homeopathy, which has been debunked to the point that we don't really need to talk about it much other than continue educating people on the information. And there's dowsing and astrology magnet, magnet and magnet healing. therapy, all oh, these power balance <laughs> buffoons. I can't wait for them to be taken down. Um, and all this stuff, I mean, this is, those things are by and large simple. And I think it's, I, it's the reason I'm, I'm a member of skeptics, skeptics organizations as well. It's because they're doing important stuff. They're doing, they're doing the educating of people on critical thinking and skepticism in areas where they may not immediately run up against a wall, as you would with religion. Mm -hmm. I am happy to run up against that wall and keep poking holes and putting dents into it until eventually the work of both those who are focusing on atheism and those who are focusing on the broader range of skepticism tear that wall to shreds. That's the goal. But, Amen. And pass the biscuits. <laughs> Peter in New Zealand, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks, Mick. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yes. we can. Thanks for calling. Oh, great. Um, this kind of follows on a little bit from your discussion of knowledge claims, which you've just been having. Um, but tell me, are you a computer programmer, Matt? Not anymore. I am. <laughs> Don is, though. You're, I'm you're a computer familiar geek. with the idea of object-oriented sure. programming, where objects have properties. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a way so, of organizing programs uh, that, that take advantage of this sort of uh, idea, right? Yeah. All right, so this, what I'm calling here about today really is the idea of um, omnipotence. And my definition of the universe is, is that which exists. Okay. Is that an okay definition for you guys? Seems okay. Sure. I, I, so that which exists. Now, I, that would include things like particular energy states, such as the difference in potential gravitational energy as an object may, you know, move through space and time. So it's not just restricted to physical reality, but yeah, it may I, energy as a form of um, existence as well. Yeah, I'd rather so, use reality than universe in that context, but I'm fine with it for this, so. Yep. Okay, so we can exclude things um, being classed as being something based on its characters. So, for example, a, a complete cup like one of those coffee cups you guys have got, whatever else it could be called, like a mug, say, it can't be a complete cup if it can't have water saved in it, for example. You know, it may be once there had been a cup, but then it was broken. Right? And then is... a broken 